Two CPUs, 13700K and 13700. Pretty much identical on paper, a slight difference in price, but what about performance? Because if you run both of these chips on a Z series motherboard or a motherboard that just supports PL1 and PL2 limits unlocked, you can run the 13700 unlimited time at the max turbo frequency, max clock speed and max wattage. So as a creator, which one should you get? And is the 13700K really worth it over the 13700? Let's find out. And let's find out about our sponsor, CCL and their latest deals. If you're looking to upgrade your PC or buy the whole system, then CCL is constantly running deals on their products. Can't pay full price on the deal? Why not spread the cost over 24 months? for 0% interest on products over £99. Use the code TN10 to get a special discount when spending over £250. Check out CCL and their latest deals in the video description below. Okay, let's look at the paper details. We both have 16 cores and 24 threads, 8 plus 8 P and E cores, okay? The 13700K boosts to 5.4 GHz. The 13700 loses 200 megahertz there. The max turbo frequency on the E cores is 4.2 GHz on the 13700, but only 100 MHz lower on the 1300. The PCI lanes are exactly the same up to PCI Gen 5. We have the same amount of lanes, same DDR4 and DDR5, same cache interestingly, which is very, very interesting. But the TDP, Intel says, is 65 watts on the 13700 and 125 watts on the 13700K. Well, that is slightly confusing and misleading actually, because like I said on the intro, if you do have a motherboard that supports PL2 and PL1 power limits, like if you can change them on the motherboard, then you can easily run the 13700 as long as you want at the max turbo frequency. It's not gonna dip down to that 65 watts that you might have seen a few years ago with, for example, the 10700 CPUs or something like that, where Intel actually locked the wattage on the CPU. Now the wattage on the CPU is unlocked, but actually it's determined on the motherboard. So yes, some of the small form factor PCs and custom made motherboards, they have locked the TDP or the wattages at 65 watts long term, you know, limit it and then short term limit might be 254 or something around there but intel says that the 13700k pulls up to 253 watts i saw about 240 watts max pulled and then the 12700 about 219 watts but i saw up to 260 watts pulled which we're going to talk about more in a moment. They both have USD 770i GPU and the same node from Intel, 10 nanometers, but the 13700 is about $25 cheaper right now when I'm making this video. I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing and if you don't mind, let me know in the comment section below what's the price in your country whenever you're watching this. Is the 13700 actually cheaper? Because sometimes the 13700 is more expensive and the 13700K makes much more sense. But also on the other hand, sometimes the 13700 is a lot cheaper than the 13700K. Then the tables have turned and then the 13700 is worth it much more. I'm gonna leave the test bench up in the description below as well if you want to see what's the actual system that I'm testing this with. First of all, memory controller. And interestingly, they're both exactly the same. If you remember the 13500 review, we saw there that the 13500 has actually like a previous generation memory controller from the 12th gen, where in here the 13700 and 13700K both support up to 5600 megatransfers per second speeds on the RAM. In terms of power consumption, that to me is the most interesting bit. If you remember the 12700 and 12700K, the 12700 pulled a little bit more than the 12700K, but in here, I see the 13700 pull a lot more watts than the 13700K. In fact, 22 watts more, which is huge. The 13700K already pulls 240 watts, but the 13700 can pull up to 262 watts especially when it heats up around this, uh, 100 degrees or so on, which means that the 13700 actually runs much, much hotter than the 13700K. 13700K, higher clock speeds, lower wattage. 13700, higher temperatures, lower clock speeds and higher wattage which is very interesting. But now the performance and what's the actual difference? The price difference is roughly around 6.3%. 
So if the 13700 performs less than 6.3% slower, then it kind of makes sense. If that makes sense, does it make sense? Make sense? Make sense? No? Yes? Maybe? Okay, Cinebench R23, the single core score is about 3.2% slower and the same on the multi-core score. So we're not losing that much there. In Geekbench 5, the single core is even less, about 1% slower and the multi-core score about 2.5% slower. In Blender, the 13700K is about 11% slower in the monster scene, but not so much in the chunk shop and classroom scenes, about seven and 9% slower. So for Blender and actual CPU rendering, the 13700K makes much more sense because the lower temperatures, higher clock speeds, and actually much higher performance there. In Photoshop, the 13700 is about 5.8% slower or up to 6.78% slower in the scores here which is kind of still on the borderline where it kind of doesn't make sense, but let's move on. In Lightroom Classic, it's only 3.3% slower on the 13700, but the active score is actually slightly faster, which is very interesting. So the 13700 in Lightroom Classic gives you more performance for your dollar than the 13700K. In Premiere Pro here, the 13700 and 13700K is literally performing exactly the same. As you can see from the scores, there is not a ton of difference. In fact, the 13700 actually performs slightly better on the GPU score, which is just interesting, even though we're using exactly the same uh, GPU. But here I see virtually no difference at all. In After Effects, the 13700 is actually slightly faster than the 13700K. But interestingly, the GPU score is the one that makes a huge difference. The 13700 has almost 20% faster GPU score, which just blows my mind. I don't know how this is possible because it's exactly the same GPU and overall these two CPUs perform exactly the same, but how? I don't know. Exactly the same version of After Effects, exactly the same parts. It, I don't know. Beats me. In DaVinci Resolve, the 13700 is about 3.8% slower in the extended overall score and about 5.5% slower in the standard overall score. The 4K, 8K media are actually faster and so is the GPU effects. Again, the GPU effects seem to be a bit better on the 13700. I have no idea why that is. Please let me know if you can put any logic to that. But the Fusion score is 13% slower. It's kind of interesting results here on DaVinci Resolve. In V-Ray, the 13700 is about 3.6% slower. So then, looking at the performance kind of benchmarks, in video editing, we kind of see that the 13700 and 13700K, there's not a ton of difference, especially in After Effects. But in photo editing, the 13700K is a little bit better there and kind of makes more sense, especially in Photoshop. But in 3D, the 13700K makes a lot more sense there. So then, knowing the performance difference, which one would you recommend? And interestingly, even though the 13700K often wasn't the best bang for buck performance in terms of the most performance for your dollar, I'd still recommend the 13700K over the 13700 just because of the power consumption. The 13700 runs a lot, a lot more hotter and pulls a lot more power. So especially here in Europe, any euro or pound saved on your electricity bill makes a big difference. So the 13700K to have it run a bit quieter and higher clock speeds, I think overall will make a little bit more sense. And I personally would spend the extra $25 to get a little bit higher clock speeds and so on. And some of the motherboards will push this even further, especially if you're on the gigabyte motherboard, you can get the 13700K run at six gigahertz by just one click in BIOS, which is very, very interesting. If you haven't seen that video, feel free to check that out. So I'd recommend the 13700K over the 13700, unless the 13700 is really, really discounted and much, much cheaper than the 13700K, then that makes much more of a sense. Check out the latest pricing and please do let me know in the comment section below what's the latest pricing by the time you're watching this video because that's very very interesting but if you are interested in building the best bank for buck creator pc then check out the best bank for buck creator pc build guide in the description below there's four video parts and there is a pc build for your budget whatever budget you have there's a pc build for there i'm talking about upgrades downgrades how to set it up how to configure it how to do everything everything explained there i honestly believe this is the best 
buying and PC build guide you can find on the internet for creators. So if you're interested in that, check it out in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.